good morning to all i am geeta assistant professor from ece department rogini college of engineering and technology i am going to handle the subject on communication engineering so now i am going to discuss about the topic on generation of am waves using non linear modulation so after completion the students will be able to what are the types of am modulators what are the disadvantages of square law modulator then draw the schematic diagram of square law modulator am modulators so in the cam modulator we are having two types of am modulator one is low level modulation or non linear modulation and high level modulation or linear modulation so in non linear modulation we are having three types square law modulator product modulator then balanced modulator in linear modulation we are having two types transistor modulator then switching modulator so in the transistor modulator we are having three terminals collect emitter base collector so the device which is used to generate an amplitude modulated wave is known as amplitude modulator so this method is mainly based on the am generation this will be classified into two types based on the characteristic so generation of am waves using non linear modulation a simple diode or transistor or fret can be used as a non linear modulator by restricting the operation over non linear characteristics so this method is only used for the small signal amplitude modulation then square law modulator or power law modulator so this modulation this will be mainly done at low power level so the device used in this modulators are operated in non linear region of its vi characteristics so this is the diagram for the square law modulator first we are having the modulating signal then we are having summer then we are having the carrier signal so these two are the input signal so these two input signal will be given to the non linear element that is we are having v1 of t so the non linear element this will be connected to the filter that is v2 of t then finally we will get the modulated signal that is v not of t so the square law modulator will be consist of three parts so first one is a summer so this will be used to both add the carrier and message signal then non linear device so we have to use the active active elements so the active elements will be like diode pjt or fet then filter the filter we have to use the band pass filter for extracting the desired modulating signal so this is the diagram for the square law modulator using diode so first we are having the carrier signal and the modulating signal this will be connected to the diode so the diode will be act as a non linear element then the filter circuit we are having resistor and capacitor so finally we are having the v not of t that is the modulator signal so mainly the message signal and the carrier signal are applied at the input or superimposed each other and makes the diode more forward biased during positive half cycle of input signal and less forward biased during negative half cycle of message signal so the magnitude of the carrier component is greater during positive half cycle and lesser negative half cycle of the modulating signal so this is the modulation waveform so first we are having the graph this will be drawn between the diode current and the diode voltage so here we are having the operating point this will be connected to the particular modulated waveform so the message signal and the carrier signal these are added to get the modulated waveform as the output then we have to analyze the modulating signal and the carrier signal these are connected in series so each other and your sum v1 of t is applied at the input of the non linear devices such as diode or transistors 
so the v1 of t will be equal to vm of t plus vc of t then v1 of t will be equal to vm sin omega mt plus vc sin omega ct input and output relationship for the nonlinear device is v2 of t will be equal to a1 v1 of t plus a2 v2 v1 square of t where a1 and a2 are constants so next we have to substitute the v1 of t in the equation v2 of t so v2 of t will be equal to a1 into vm sin omega mt plus vc sin omega ct plus a2 into vm sin omega mt plus vc sin omega ct the whole square so next we have to multiply the equations v2 of t will be equal to a1 vm sin omega mt plus a1 vc sin omega ct plus a2 vm square sin square omega mt plus a2 vc square sin square omega ct plus 2 a2 vm vc sin omega mt into sin omega ct by neglecting higher order terms so finally we will get the equation as v2 of t will be equal to a1 into vm sin omega mt plus a1 in vc sin omega ct plus a2 to vm vc sin omega ct sin omega mt so next we have to apply the sin a sin b formula that is cos a minus b minus cos a plus b divided by 2 so v2 of t will be equal to a1 into vm sin omega mt plus a1 vc sin omega ct plus 2 a2 vm vc divided by 2 into cos omega c minus omega m into t minus cos omega c plus omega m into t v2 of t will be equal to a1 vm sin omega mt plus a1 vc sin omega ct plus a2 vm vc cos omega c minus omega m t minus cos omega c plus omega m t when the bandpass filter that is lc tuned circuit tuned to carrier frequency so it allows only the higher frequencies like omega c so omega c minus omega m and omega c plus omega m and this will be block the low frequency like omega m so v not of t will be equal to a1 omega c cos a1 vc sin omega ct plus a2 vm vc cos omega c minus omega m t minus cos omega c plus omega m into t so in this way we will generate our amplitude modulation wave so next we are having some advantages and disadvantages so the advantages are the bandpass filter the harmonics are reduced then disadvantages the diode modulator does not provide amplification so we are using only the single diode so this is unable to balance out of the desired frequency completely so these limitations can be eliminated by using amplifying devices like transistor fed in a balanced mode quiz question is based on generation of am waves using non linear modulation is the advantage of using non linear modulator or dash